Lessons from Arundo Control Man is an easy to use training program for anyone working in construction, road or park maintenance, landscaping, ranch land management, or anyone who may encounter this plant. The program was produced by a partnership of state agencies to help teach Texans about Arundo Donax and what you can do to help control and prevent this invasive plant from taking over our Texas landscapes. This program includes a brochure for trainees. You can print or request copies of the brochure from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department website at tpwd.texas.gov forward slash Arundo Control Man. We want you to join the fight and become an Arundo Control Hero. The Arundo Prevention Program for Texas has three key steps to remember. Know the enemy, be aware, and sound the alarm. Know the enemy. Learn to recognize non-native Arundo and learn about why and how we can all work together to manage this invasive plant. In order to kick Arundo out of Texas roadways and waterways, we first have to know and understand it. Arundo's scientific name is Arundo Donax, but it's commonly called Arundo, Giant Reed, Georgia Cane, and Carrizo Cane. Before we talk about how to identify it, let's start with why we need to work together to manage Arundo in Texas. Arundo is a highly invasive, non-native plant that will take over and completely dominate a landscape if we let it. It grows very quickly, up to two inches per day, forming dense stands that get in the way of river and stream access. This is a photo along the Texas-Mexico border on the Rio Grande. What you're seeing here is 100% Arundo and a threat to our border security. Arundo is not a new problem. It was brought to Texas long ago by Spanish colonists. The plant was used for building material and to pipe water through its hollow center, and young plants were used as livestock forage. However, as Texas habitats have changed over the years, lack of understanding and mistreatment of this plant have caused it to begin to spread more widely and rapidly and to become a big problem. Arundo can grow on dry land and is happy enough in roadside right-of-ways, but it's most happy with its feet in the water. Arundo growing in a stream with a ready water supply can reduce stream flows and impact water quality as its large leaves pump water into the atmosphere. Studies show that dense colonies of Arundo may use up to 48 acre-feet of water for each acre of infestation within a stream bed. Arundo also interferes with the floodplain's natural ability to lessen flood energy. When thick Arundo colonies form within a stream bed and floodplain, floodwaters can be diverted into the banks and lead to property damage like that pictured here. Arundo can cause floodwaters to back up and increase the area impacted by flooding by as much as 10%. That may not seem like a lot, unless your yard is one of the 10% that might not have flooded otherwise. The Arundo plant has a high wax content and is an extremely volatile fuel which supports extremely hot fires. It can substantially increase the danger and intensity of wildfires and decrease the ability of the waterway to act as a natural fire break. Arundo also threatens our natural heritage, especially on our rivers and streams. Arundo stands crowd out native plants, degrading habitat for native fish and wildlife. Its roots can dominate riverbanks, forming a thick mat near the surface that lacks the deep root strength that our native grasses have. Floodwaters can easily undercut the Arundo root mass, resulting in erosion, water quality decline, and bank failure. Dense Arundo stands can get in the way of recreational access to rivers and streams for bank fishing, swimming, and even boating. Arundo spreads like wildfire. When disturbed by floods, mowing, or shredding, the Arundo plant will resprout vigorously, and each tiny fragment of stalk or roots can float downstream and create a new plant. Improper management can lead to Arundo quickly spreading and taking over a waterway, as well as roadside right-of-ways where it can reduce visibility. Feral animals like wild hogs and nutria, as well as uninformed people, are playing a role in its spread across Texas, especially in waterways. Now that you know why we need to manage Arundo, it's time to train your eye to spot this aggressive invader. Arundo looks a bit like bamboo or corn, but has some distinctive features. It's a tall, cane-like grass with hollow, jointed stems. 
Unlike bamboo, the long, wide leaves of arundo attach directly to the cane rather than to a leaf stem. Arundo has distinctive, showy plumes in late summer and fall. Arundo is fast growing and forms dense, tall stands which can reach up to 30 feet tall, much taller than corn. It isn't enough to know what the arundo plant looks like. You also need to train your eye for closer inspections to be a true arundo control hero. In some cases, especially around construction areas, you might only see a tuber like mass of large roots or even just some root fragments. These roots can be two to three inches wide. You could also see a cane fragment or a stalk with sprouts growing at the joints, called nodes, between the segments. Each sprouting node can grow into a new plant, especially when in contact with water. Arundo spreads by fragments, so spotting fragments is the key to catching it early. The next step is to be aware. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department and other local partners are working with landowners to manage Arundo along our waterways, but we need your help to keep it from getting there in the first place or coming back to reinfest an area after it's finally under control. Arundo is easily spread, so we need you to be aware of the ways Arundo sneaks into our waterways and take steps to stop it in its tracks. Arundo is a sneaky plant that's easily spread. Construction fill dirt and other aggregate materials sometimes contain Arundo roots or fragments that can cause an infestation and an expensive problem for everyone down the road. Material suppliers can help by watching for and managing Arundo plants at material source locations. During construction, inspect and reject fill material containing plant fragments, especially near waterways, because they are prime sites for invasion. If this isn't possible, try to watch for and remove any root or cane fragments brought in with the fill dirt to help prevent an infestation from getting started. During follow up inspections, watch for Arundo sprouts and treat it with herbicide promptly. Follow up to be sure it's dead and retreat if needed. If you can't follow up, try to inform the property owner about Arundo and how to manage it properly. Construction activities that involve the use of earth moving equipment always have the potential to spread Arundo. Check construction sites for Arundo and treat it aggressively with herbicide before bringing in construction equipment whenever possible. Otherwise, take great care to ensure that Arundo is removed and transported to the landfill or spread to dry on firm ground. During roadside right of way or lawn maintenance, special care must be taken when Arundo is present. Even a tiny fragment can create a new plant, especially when fragments are transported by the stream or river. When you spot Arundo, mow around it, taking care not to chop any cane stalks. If you accidentally mow some Arundo, immediately stop and pick up any cane fragments. Turn off the mower and follow manufacturer safety recommendations to check for and remove any fragments caught in the blade or mower deck so you don't carry them with you to infest a new site. Herbicides are the best way to treat mature Arundo plants. When used properly, herbicide treatment has the least environmental impact and the greatest effect. Several herbicides are specifically labeled for use to treat Arundo. Herbicides with Amazapir or Amazamox have shown to be most effective. They're sometimes mixed with glyphosate, which can also be used alone to treat Arundo. Be sure to apply herbicide properly and take steps to protect our waterways. Near water, the law requires that you use an herbicide formulation that's labeled for aquatic use. Before managing Arundo along waterways, a nuisance aquatic vegetation treatment proposal must be submitted to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. For assistance with the treatment proposal, call Texas Parks and Wildlife Department at 512 389 4444. And ask for an aquatic invasive species biologist or email aquaticinvasives at tpwd.texas.gov. After herbicide, it's essential to leave Arundo plants in place, even after they brown, to avoid reinvigorating them or they may re sprout. Dead Arundo colonies provide more erosion control than bare ground. And they act as a protective nursery area for new native plants. Be watchful of treated plants 
and retreat any new Arundo shoots. Small plants and sprouting nodes can be physically removed by hand. Mechanical removal is just not a good option for large colonies. Pictured here are small Arundo plants that have been physically removed by hand and laid out to dry on a gravel bar. After the pulled plants and stalks are completely dry, they no longer pose a threat to spreading. The last step in becoming an Arundo control hero is to sound the alarm. How can you sound the alarm? It's easy. Tell others about Arundo, how to identify it and how to manage it, and always speak up when you see Arundo being mismanaged. Thank you for taking the time to get involved and become an Arundo control hero. You are playing a key role in the fight against the Arundo invasion in Texas. Remember, know the enemy, be aware, and sound the alarm. Want to learn more? Good online resources are Texas A&M's Aquaplant website and texasinvasives.org. Spread the word by sharing this training program with others. Be sure to print or request copies of the Arundo Control Man training brochure from the TPWD website at tpwd.texas.gov forward slash Arundo Control Man.